React Native Maps is a great library for React Native that gets you up and running similar to the web. We'll have a look at installing and setting it up as well as using custom markers, content and integrating it with an API. We have a bushfire front application we're building and we're going to pull in live data of bushfires happening around Australia and map them out on React Native Maps. So my name's Adrian and I do design and development content. So if you like this kind of content and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe and let's just jump right into it. Let's get started by Googling React Native Maps. Now we'll go to the very first link and we'll be able to see that this is a React Native community package and it works on both iOS and Android. If we scroll down here, we can see that there's a few instructions we'll need to do to get it up and running. And once that's done, we'll have a lot of different components we can utilize, such as the map view, which will render a map for us, whether we're using the iOS maps uh, module or if we want to use the Google Maps module. We'll have markers and callouts. So when you select a marker, we have some more information on there. And we can create things like polygons and circles and overlays. So we might take a look at that too. To start off with, we'll have a look at a project we currently have, which is actually called our Bushfire Front application. This is an application we've been building um, and it has a lot of little packages already, such as push notifications, it's got styled components, SVG icons and React Navigation. I've done videos about those, so you can check them up above. But in this case, we'll just have a look at adding the package for React Native Maps and have a look at the install instructions to get it up and running. If we take a look here, we start off by installing the library by running yarn add react-native-maps-e. And the dash e or save dash extract on npm will make sure that the code is essentially configured and built properly so that we can use it. So let's open up our project here and add this dependency. While that's running in the background, let's have a look at the next steps we have to do. So we'll be running here on Android. So we'll need to make sure that we get an API key from Google for the Android SDK. We'll take a look at that when we get to the step. But otherwise, we've got a build configuration here for iOS. And in this case, since we're doing React Native on Android, we'll just skip this part and scroll down here to the Android section. Now, for the Android section, it says here that if you're running React Native version 0.59 or lower, you'll have to define some of these settings manually. But otherwise, they should happen automatically. Now, in my case, I've already tried this and it didn't work out so well. So I'm actually going to go through all these steps and tell you more or less how to make sure that they're configured properly. So the, for, for this first one, we'll need to jump into the Android settings .gradle file and add these two lines in. So let's do this now. We'll jump in here for Android and we'll jump here into the build.gradle. In here, we'll just make sure that these two lines are added. So sorry, this is in the settings.gradle. So we'll put this right here at the top. Next, we'll have to jump into Android app build.gradle. And in there, we'll also add a couple more settings. So let's cancel out these directories. And here in the build.gradle, if we scroll down to the dependencies section, we can simply add React Native Maps in there. Next, if we have a look, we need to add additional details here for the project so it knows what versions it's running on. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the folder here for, I think, Gradle uh, properties. No, sorry, Gradle um, build.gradle. And in here, we've got those properties. We'll copy the two we're missing, which is the Play Services version and the Android Maps Util version, and also the support version for the library. We'll place paste these in here. And while these are currently undefined, we'll have to add a variable in here. So in this case, we'll just add 28.0.0 and for the maps, we'll do plus 0.5. This is something that's not in the documentation, but these are the defaults recommended online. With that done, we'll need to jump into our file here for the uh, build. And if you're running different versions of the Play Store, you should be putting these lines of code in to this dependencies section. But in our case, we're not doing that. So I'm not copying those over. 
Finally, we'll need to make sure that the API key is set in the Android manifest.xml file. So we'll jump in here into SRC uh, main and here we have our Android manifest. And in the application subpath, we'll place this in with the attribute for the key. Next, we'll want to create a Google API key, and we do this by going to console.cloud.google.com. In there, you can create a project and request an API key for using something like the Android SDK Maps profile. I've already created one, so I'm just going to copy that across and paste it into my Android manifest.xml file. Next, we'll need to make sure that we've added this following line to the main application.java. So if we jump into Android app SRC main uh, Java and main application Java here, uh, we'll just paste this in below and that should be the final step, I believe, to get it up and running. Now all we have to do is run npx react-native run-android and have a look if that starts to launch. And looks like that's worked. Now we can begin using React Native Maps and implementing it. We might create a separate tab for the navigation for it so that it can run and we can take a closer look at how to use it. With that done, let's create some components so we can begin using React Native Maps. We'll create a bushfire map.js here, and this can be an empty React Native object for the time being. In here, we'll import it and we'll call bushfire map import from bushfire map. And we'll add this as a new tab at the bottom of our screen down here. And we'll just import it as per se and call this bushfire map or even just map. Let's apply this and it should pop up here, which it has. And we can also make sure that it's the initial element whenever we load our application. Otherwise, it's going to keep refreshing to the separate screen there. So that's looking good. And we'll also change this home section with a home icon. Beautiful. With that done, we can take a look at importing React Native Maps into our project. The syntax here is to import the map view with the Google provider. And in this case, we are going to be using Google Maps. So we'll do that up here. Next, we need to add some styling. And here's some pre-made styling for the map, which essentially makes it a height of 400, a width of 400 and centers it. Now, in our case, I don't want it centered or have a width. So I'm just going to leave these separate. On top of that, we'll also need to import the style sheet component here from React Native. After that, we can actually create our map view here. So let's do that and we'll paste it straight into our container here. And this looks good. So in terms of this component, it seems to have a pretty good layout. It's importing and pulling in the styles over here. And the map is going to expand out to an object fill. Let's apply that and have a look at our project. So here we can see the Google map has applied. It's been imported to our project, but the height is only 400. And ideally I want this to be 100%. Let's see if we can update this in the styling. There we go. So that looks a lot better. Next, let's have a look at adding some markers to our map. I've got this really cool endpoint API for bushfire events, and we'll create this as a new Axios base URL. And for this, we'll just pass it in and call it in our store as API map. We'll pass it in with the base URL here, and we'll be able to call it in our constructor, such as calling this dot API map dot get, and then calling then getting the data from that object and passing it into console.log just so that we can have a look at it. If we apply this and have a look at our console, we should be able to see the type of data coming in. In this case, it's a number of different locations with GPS coordinates and some details around them. So what we'll do is we'll assign this to an attribute here called observable observable features, and this will be an array. 
And what we can do here is with the data, we'll do this dot features equals data dot features. And if we apply this and also do a console.log, we should see what kind of data is happening in there. This will initiate the bushfire map markers that we can now use in our application. So all we have to do in here is pull in uh, MobX so that we can access this store. So let's do that now. We'll import observer and inject uh, from MobX React. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I've got a separate project, but you can create your own stores for applying st stuff, or you can even use Redux. So in here, I'll do observer and I'll also do inject and I'll inject the store in this case. This will give us access to all those markers that we brought in by the API. So what we'll do is we'll import the marker from React Native Maps and we'll run a command to pull in the store by running this dot props dot store dot features and we'll map this out. We'll run um, map or feature item and for this feature item we'll put in a marker for each one and for this marker we'll put in a key which can be an index and let's put that in here and on top of that we'll pull in the coordinates so the coordinates probably will have a latitude and a longitude. And for those, let's have a look at our console.log and see what the syntax for that is. So it's under geometry and coordinates. So what we'll do is we'll call in feature.geometry.coordinates and in here we'll do the very first one and we'll do the second one in here. If we apply this and just test it out, we should be able to see all our mapped locations. Uh, sometimes though, these are backwards, so we've got to make sure they're in the right area. So let's refresh that one more time and there they all are. So that's looking pretty good. So currently when we're launching our application, our application map isn't centering to the icons we have. So we can fix that by creating a ref here. And this ref will define a map view, which will pass an arrow function to define this.props.store.mapView, which we'll be able to use in our store. And for our store, we'll define it up here as map view. And in the constructor, we'll call this.mapView. Um, dot fit to elements is true. Let's apply this and refresh our application and see what that looks like. So what's happening now is it seems that our store is completing before our map view is able to center. So we'll move this out and add it here as get fire map data. We'll do this as an arrow function and we'll define it down here and it'll get our data. Then when we run a constructor here for our component, passing in props and super props, then we can call this.props.store.getFireMapData. And once this gets the data, it should automatically um, pull in all the information that we need. So let's refresh our application. And there we go. As soon as the fire map has been created, it calls to get the data. And then once the data is collected, it uses the ref from the element here to call fit to elements view and zooms in the map to our coordinates, which is really cool. So now we've got this done and we can see all the different sort of elements, but we can't click on them yet. So let's take a look at that next. Another way we can center our elements is by removing this section here from our store and simply applying a on map ready which calls the fit to elements inside our component. So that way, every time we refresh, it's going to center them because previously it was only centering them when our store was being called and it wasn't working very well for fast refresh. We're going to take a look at the call out component, which you place inside a marker. So that's down here. And if we pull this out, we can add some extra information. Let's open up our application over here. And inside each one of these markers, let's open up the marker and add a closing marker. 
and in here we'll add in the call out. Now for the time being, I might just make this as a text element, just for some basic information that we can view that it's working. And we'll have to pass in call out up here with our marker and we've already got text defined, so that's fine. Let's apply this and refresh our application. And once that's done, let's take a look at our marker. So when we click on each one of those, we can see that the working text is appearing. Let's see if we can pull some cool data in here. We've got our console.log here, and let's have a look at the type of data we're getting. In each one of these, we've got some properties which gives us a classification, a status, a type, a situation, a region, and whatnot. So let's start off by mapping in the region. So the context for this is properties and then region. So in here, we'll do um, properties, dot region and let's apply that to start off with and have a look what that looks like. Uh, just put in features here and refresh and let's take a look at that over here. So now we've got Kimberly, Pilbara, South Great Metro. So that's looking good. So let's see if we can create some custom labels for these markers because right now they're very generic and we don't really know what's going on. What we can do here is we can create a new text element and for this we'll copy in the properties from the previous one but in here we'll do status and this should give us a bit more information about what's happening at each location so here we can see responding monitoring and whatnot what other properties do we have here to play with we also have type so let's pull in the type here and see what kind of types we have this might be a bit more descriptive so if we have a look we've got a fire, a bushfire, structured fire, and maybe even a burn off. So what we can do is we can create an element outside of the marker. And in this case, we might just pass in the features type property. Let's pull this into a text element and see what this looks like. So if we do this, instead of having markers now, uh, oops, let's put this up here. Um, instead of having markers now, what we're going to have is we're going to have all these labels here. This is because we're just passing in a text element instead of an actual icon. So we actually have icons in our application. We created some font awesome icons so we can import this up above. And here, for example, we could check if the feature type is fire or bushfire and we can pass in an icon instead. So let's do feature.properties.type and if it equals a fire, then we'll pass in a icon with the name being fire and the color being red. Otherwise, we'll just pass in null. Let's remove this in here now and let's just update this and refresh it. Let's see what we get. So now we can see we've still got our markers, but we can see here there is an actual fire happening. If we make this font size a little bit bigger, uh, what's the thing for size? Size, maybe we'll do this to 24. We should be able to see that icon a little bit better. I believe this is meant to be a number. So let's refresh that. And there's a couple of other types we also have. We've also got bushfire. So for bushfire, maybe we'll have a different font awesome icon. Um, for the time being, let's just do home, uh, just so that we can see the difference. Now this one here says it's a bushfire, but it's not showing up. Let's double check. There we go. So we've got the icons now for the home and for the bushfire. And if we zoom in here, uh, yep, so that's showing up okay, and this one here showing up, it's going a little bit funny with the text, but that's still okay. Let's finish off by adding a few more icons here. We've got another one here as a burn off, so let's create an icon for that here too. Uh, we'll do burn off, and let's see what other ones we also have. 
So we've also got one here. And if I zoom in on that, that's a structured fire. So maybe for that one, let's put in structured fire. And this could be maybe a fire fox as the icon. Let's see what other ones we have. I think that's almost all of them done. Uh, finally, we have a one called monitoring. So maybe we'll do this something like a computer and put in monitoring. Let's have a look what that takes effect. So that icon did not take effect. I think I've called that the wrong thing. Um, monitoring. Let's refresh that. And let's zoom in over here. Ah, that's a structured fire, is it? I've clicked the wrong thing. Ah, that's a structure fire. So that looks very similar to structured fire, but the syntax is a little bit different, but that's okay. So we've got that one here. And now I think we've got all our labels. There's one more here, and this is a bush fire monitoring. So I think that is it. Uh, now let's also fix up this view here. So for this view, let's do the width of at least 240. So that way the text can all fit in. Now, if we take a look at this now, the text is fitting in a little bit better. Uh, we've got all our icons in there and they're looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it gives you an idea of how we can use these icons and call outs to provide some information about what's going on. I hope this video gave you a better idea of how to use React Native Maps for your application. If you like this kind of content and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. I've got videos around things like styled components and QR code readers, so if you want to check those out, just click in the links above. Otherwise, thank you for watching.